Hi everyone, welcome back to Biological Imaging. I'm Joe DeGeorgis. Today in Lecture 9, we're going to talk about two different lighting techniques for the compound light microscope. The first is referred to as dark field microscopy, and the second is referred to as phase contrast. Let's get started. The other day, we talked a little bit about the design of the compound microscope, and we said that the microscope is designed in such a way that it makes it comfortable to sit at your desk and use the microscope. And what that meant was that there was a mirror here and the specimen would be viewed by the objective, like a 5x, and the light would come up and bounce off of the glass and then go through the eyepiece. And I said that this part here is just air. It's just a hollow set of tubes. So you could redesign the microscope to have an eyepiece, a tube of metal or something like that, and then the microscope objective. And that if we had a 5x microscope objective and a 10x eyepiece, that the total magnification would be 50x. So the top part is a pretty simple uh, device optically. So now I'd like to talk about the part of the microscope that's below the specimen. So here's our microscope stage and we have a slide and our sample and then of course a cover slip. And all of this part here or here of course is above the specimen. Below the specimen we start out with a light source, which is just a light bulb with a filament, and it gives off light. And at the base, there is an aperture that is a variable sized hole. It could be small or it could be large, and they call that the field diaphragm. But the field diaphragm is just an aperture, and if you rotate the Base here, it increases or decreases the size of the hole, the size of the aperture. And that controls the amount of light that comes through. So a small aperture might have a, a narrow width of um, a narrow band of light, or if you open it up and it's it's larger, then you're going to have a, a larger band of light. And the light goes up through a second aperture called the condenser aperture. So this is also variable. It could be small or it could be large. And then there's a lens. And the lens is the condenser lens. And the goal of the condenser lens is to focus the light onto the specimen like this. So when we're trying to set the microscope up into curler illumination, what we're doing is we're moving this lens around so that it centers this aperture in the middle and it centers the light source with the sample and aligns it with the microscope objective, like a 10x objective. And then we foc to focus this light, we move this lens the condenser lens up and down relative to the sample or relative to the stage with a focusing knob that's designed to move this lens up and down. And then we move it left, right, backwards and forwards until the light from the field diaphragm, that's emerging from the field diaphragm, is centered in the middle of the specimen and aligned with the microscope objective. And this technique is used for bright field microscopy. For dark field microscopy, you rotate in a black disc that blocks out the light at this part of the sample so that when the objective is looking down at the sample, there is a black background behind the specimen, and the light has to illuminate it from the edge. 
So you have your specimen, you have a black background underneath, and then there's some slots at the edge of the disc that allow the light to come up at an angle and hit the specimen. So the specimen does get illuminated by these rays of light that come in from the side, but the background itself is black because this is a dark sphere that, that blocks out the light in the background. I'm going to try to demonstrate that now with the microscope. Okay, so we've talked about the top part of the camera. This is the 10x microscope objective and the light is going from the lens of the objective just through a hollow tube and some of it is reflecting off of a mirror so that you can see it. The light comes out the eyepieces and par part of it ends up going through this hollow tube to the camera itself. The lower part of the microscope controls the light coming from the light bulb. So the light bulb is in the base and right above the light bulb is an aperture, a variable aperture that they call the field diaphragm. So if you rotate the diaphragm toward clockwise to the left, then it closes down the size of the hole and if you move in the clockwise direction or towards the right, it opens up the size of the aperture. You would like the aperture to be open enough so that the light fills the entire screen. So ultimately, it fills the entire area that's viewed by the camera, but you don't want to open it up further than that because stray light can interfere with the final image. So it's a way of controlling the amount of light that's going to the condenser lens. And the condenser lens focuses the light onto the microscope slide and it's controlled, the focus is controlled by this focusing knob. So I'm gonna loosen this up and take off the condenser lens so that you can see it. Here we go. So there it is, that's the condenser lens. So the light goes through this side and then it gets focused with this lens onto the sample. And we can move this lens around, that is align it to set it up in curler illumination by moving these two knobs which just push this thing around on this holder. So I'm going to set it back in if I can. And then I'm going to start to move these around to clamp it in first of all, and then to move the um, condenser lens in place for curler illumination. Now, to properly set it up in curler illumination, you need your microscope objective focused on the specimen and then you need to focus the light onto the specimen with the condenser lens, which is done by centering it and focusing the light so that you can see the edges of this aperture, the field diaphragm, sharp on the center of your screen. So I'm going to close this down and it's way out of focus now. That's why we can't see the edges. So I'm going to now try to focus the objective. I'm going to center it a little bit. So I'm going to focus the specimen to the best of my ability. And then I'm going to focus the condenser lens. I can see it moving off, off to the right. So I'm going to try to center the lens a little bit. And then I'm going to focus it again. I'll open up the field diaphragm a little bit. Now we can see the edges of the field diaphragm. 
I'm going to try to center it. Make the diaphragm a little bit smaller, the aperture a little smaller, and then try to sharpen the edges of the diaphragm to the best of my ability. Something like that. And then center it once again. Whoops. Something like that. And now open the field diaphragm up so that it fills, the light fills the screen. Then we have the condenser aperture here, which closes down the light also just below the condenser lens, and that helps to create contrast. Now, for dark field, we rotate this turret, which swings the dark disk for dark field underneath the specimen. And so now the light is coming up through little slits on either side of that dark disk to illuminate the sample. And I'm going to open up the condenser aperture until we can see the specimen. Something like that. And now I'm going to take my photograph. OK, let's try that again. So we're going to take a photograph. Let's see where we get to. It says that it's two and a half seconds is the shutter speed. And this is our final photograph. Um, it looks OK, but that shutter speed is too fast for normal imaging. So here I can see that my shutter speed is two and a half seconds. So I want it to be faster than that. So I'm going to do my best to bring up the ISO to something much higher. Whoops. And then now my shutter is 1 over 50, which isn't as fast as I'd like. But we're on the very highest ISO. So I'm going to take my photograph there. OK, now I'm going to try to increase the light. And I increase the light to the maximum. And that helped the shutter speed a little bit, but it's still only 1 over 60. So I'll shoot it again. I'm going to focus it a little bit and take my photograph. And there we go. There's our image. Now, if I want it to be a little bit darker than this, then I can play with exposure compensation and drop it down below zero. Let's do two thirds of a stop. OK, let's try that again. I said if we double click on exposure compensation and we go down, it jumped up. That's zero. Now if we go down two thirds of a stop below zero towards minus one, which is a full stop, which is half the amount of light, and we take our shot at two thirds below, you can see our photograph there is much darker. So. There you go, that's dark field microscopy. Okay, you guys, I just wanted to show you a quick close up of the turret. Right now it's set up for bright field. BF is for bright field. And if you want to swing the dark field disc that has created a dark background, you just rotate the turret counterclockwise until you see DF for dark field. We can also see our field diaphragm here and if you rotate it to the left or counterclockwise it closes down the field diaphragm and if you turn it towards the right or clockwise you can see that the field diaphragm opens up 
and it provides more light to the specimen. Okay, you guys, that's it for today. Next time we're gonna do part B on phase contrast.